Hi guys and welcome to this week's video. I'm in Devon and I've never been to Devon before so I'm super excited. So I've got three days to whisk around the place and try and conjure up hopefully some nice landscape pictures. And I'm commencing my shoot at this rather splendid looking rock behind me. It's called Black Church Rock. And when I say splendid, I really, really did mean splendid. Five and a half hours in the car last night, stayed overnight in the car park, about half an hour walk away from here. And I wanted to make this my first port of call. I suppose this is the, the main reason why I'm here. I've been hanging around for quite a while now, waiting for the tide to recede. And the reason why we need the tide all the way out is because there's two holes in the rock and they're part of the attraction of this area or certainly of this rock and the only way you could photograph it is by waiting for the tide to go out and I've still got about two or three hours before the tide eventually goes out so all I'm going to do now is chase the tide as it goes out and look for various compositions until eventually I can go far enough out so that you can see the two holes in the rock because even from here I'm probably a little bit further out where I'm about to venture you still can't see the holes in the rock so let's give it a go and it is quite slippery but it is very safe because obviously not only is the water shallow here but the tide is going out that doesn't mean to say it's not slippery or I might fall over my ass and get wet or worse okay very interesting the lines of rock conveniently aim out towards Black Church Rock. So at least I've got something in the foreground interest to go at. Yeah, I quite like this. The big puddles of water, I haven't got my wellies on, so I just need to make sure I don't step in a big puddle because it's a long way back. And it's not nice to do that when you've got wet feet. Okay, quite like this. In the foreground right beside me here, uh, it's slate-like actually, looking at slate from above. It looks like it needs to be chopped down into fine slate slabs. So that's quite nice. Again, really fine lines, quite colorful as well. So I might use every inch of my 16 mm lens, go really wide, get my tripod nice and low and shoot out. I didn't like the shot from back there. I was attempting to take the shot from back there, but I'm really not keen on it. And the reason why I wasn't keen on it is because the lines down here on the rock that I'm currently kneeling on look fantastic for foreground interest, but unfortunately they sit on the same side as the rock in the background, which is clearly the main focus of attention. So therefore the picture seemed to be very weighted to one side and I really really hate that so all I've done is moved slightly further forward and aimed at another rock which is this one just in front of me just here which is quite 
feature full I quite like that and I might do something that I never do I might even go for a square crop I'm not trying any long exposures or anything at the moment I'm just taking a few normal shots and that looks quite nice to me I quite like it yeah so what I tend to do with shots like this is I tend to play around just grab some normal shots and when there's that one shot that really stands out to me then I'll take my time throw a six stop or a ten stop filter on there really extend that shutter speed and play around and yeah do generally more than what I'm doing now I suppose I'm quite guilty of that I'm guilty of just you know taking ordinary shots maybe way too often but I just like taking pictures I suppose oh it's quite odd so on here ISO 50 I'm closing my aperture to f16 I'm focusing on that rock in front of me there which is more than enough make sure my camera is nice and level it's not a bad shot this one uh, it's not feature full enough for me but it's an okay shot histogram is showing me nothing is overexposed in the image and I've got a 0.9 soft red on the top there just to balance that light out in the scene Like I said earlier, all I'm going to do now is just follow the tide out and just look to pick things up in the foreground interest that I think will add interest to the image. Shooting that rock in the background, that's looking pretty terrific. The only slight disadvantage I have, unfortunately, I don't have my wellies with me. There's a bit of a hike down here, so I wore my boots. But now I'm here, wish I had my wellies on. <laughs> This is a really nice shot. A small line of rocks in front of me that I'm using as foreground interest with the camera and portrait orientation makes a great lead in line. You've got the rocks on the left hand side drawing the viewer's eye right up to that rock and that is really nice. It's very busy around the rock but that's something I'll probably take care of in post-production. But look, what I like to do, I like to give myself plenty of options. So in this instance, I've set up my camera obviously in manual but with a slow shutter speed and I've rattled off a few shots timing it just as the wave has come across these rocks just because sometimes I like shots like that once I've done that again without moving the camera without moving the focus point the focus point at the moment is right on these rocks because quite literally it's so far into the frame especially at f16 f18 that I'm currently shooting at everything is rendered in focus anyway but without moving the camera, without moving the composition or anything, I've now added a 10 stop filter and I've calculated the exposure to two minutes. And yeah, really nice. With the two minutes, it's going to give me a bit of blurry sky, but more importantly, of course, it's going to turn the sea into an ice skating rink. And that is, of course, what I'm trying to achieve. But giving myself options so there's options there with a slow shutter speed I might like that if not the 10 stop option I certainly will like that so that's two options but now there's some nice clouds forming in the sky so and I've said this on countless videos 
what I'm now going to do is take the 10 stop filter off and take a few shots sped up just because at two minutes the clouds aren't moving very fast so if the blurry skies aren't interesting then I'll just simply swap the sky with the sky that's there right now which does look very nice by the way it's a very blue sky because what time are we on 10 to 5 we still got three hours before the tide is fully out before I can in theory take advantage of this wonderful place so I'm really enjoying this but that's what I like to do I know I've said it time and time again but I like to give myself lots lots of options take lots of pictures give myself lots of options tell you what that sky is looking nicer and nicer and nicer let's get that 10 stop filter out of my pocket and let's have a look at that back to bulb mode live view let's keep everything as is because my histogram is saying nothing is overexposed in the sky I didn't mention it earlier but I got a 0.9 soft grad on the front of the lens as well I'm going to just increase my shutter speed just ever so slightly in case you're wondering why I'm still here looking like this like a Burke shorts uh, is certainly the order of today and t-shirt as well but but I've been stood around for three or four hours and getting a little bit chilly but uh, not so much on the legs no comments please <laughs> Let me just talk you through my composition stepping back out as far as I dare go the rock looks amazing now and I can see through both holes so what I'm going to do is tilt my camera down and put the rock just on the top third two-thirds of all this gorgeousness on the bottom and all I'm doing is looking or all I've done should I say is looked for a line of water that's rushing in that sits quite nicely on a rule of third so what I've done is I've placed this water here down on my left hand side on the bottom left hand side of the frame coming up the frame and obviously at an angle from left to right drawing the viewers eye in it's very difficult to get this bit wrong really because it's so nice really really is so nice the light behind me is so blinding the Sun is just starting to drop down maybe an hour or so it'll hit the horizon I'm not sure how it's going to light this up it's lighting it up fantastic at the moment 
But yeah, okay, so let's go back to this composition. Nice and simple, except with the low sun, I'm actually in the image now as well, which is a bit of a bind. So I'll have to take a two second timer and step out, jump over there as quick as I can to get myself out with this shot. My settings right now, ISO 100 F11 as always, and I'm at an eighth of a second. The good thing about an eighth of a second, A, it looks good as it is, especially with a little bit of movement in the water, not too much, but a little bit, but an eighth of a second translates to two minutes when I drop my 10 stop filter on. And again, giving myself lots of options. I'm gonna grab a couple of shots at an eighth of a second and obviously quite a few shots after I've dropped my 10 stop filter on the front of the lens. There's not many clouds in the sky, but the few clouds that are in the sky seem to be blurring quite nicely at two minutes. So what I've, I've opted for now is a four minute exposure. So at F11, what I've now had to do is close my aperture up. I've extended my shutter speed by one stop, so I've doubled my shutter speed. Therefore, I have to uh, half the size of the hole. So therefore, I've opted from F11, closing the hole up to F16. The light will be exactly the same, but now over a four minute period, we will have uh, a bit more blurring of the, the clouds going on, as long as the few clouds that are there don't start to disappear too much. But again, just options. I'm just giving myself options. Bit of a tip for you in case you ever find yourself in this situation. I'm being backlit from the sun and my shadow is going all the way into the frame. The problem is, is that the light behind me is really, really bright and I don't know how well this camera handles light falling in through the viewfinder over a long exposure and I don't want to take that risk. So I'm just standing here to block out any light. But now the problem is my body is casting a great big shadow right over the main focal point of this image which is really really annoying so a good solution for that is well i've taken my 10 stop filter off camera's all set focus normal 10 second delay take the shot i got 10 seconds to get myself out of the frame and away it goes And now because I haven't moved the camera, I can simply swap the bits over that I don't like. And that's good. Right, okay, so now, um, I, probably, I probably don't want to go any further back. But there's a little rock pool in front of me here that's, that's interesting me. While I'm standing here looking around for the compositions, there's a small rock pool there. And that small rock pool is looking quite interesting. So what I might do is wander up and see if I can get my camera down low enough to utilize that rock pool as foreground interest. I think that looks really nice. I'm not a massive fan of the 16 mil, but if you've got 16 mil on your lens, then a time times like this is when it really would come into its own. So yeah, let's do it. So I'm using all of that 16 mil and I'm also utilizing a polarizer as well to take the sheen off this rock pool i mean this little rock pool here just just looks tremendous looking down inside it just looks really really nice i so hope that the camera will pick that up just use my polarizer just spin it round just to get that glare off that water like that so we can see all that deliciousness underneath and the same rules apply Right, that is it. I stayed pretty much until sunset. Clearly that's not going to cast any light behind the rock, which is a bit of a shame, but never mind. And this is obviously a sunrise location, but uh, I'm off somewhere else tomorrow morning and then somewhere else for sunset. And I don't know what I'm going to do during the day. Might have a sleep after an early rise tomorrow and a big hike back up to the van tonight. If you've enjoyed this content and you want to find your way back, do me a favor, hit the subscription button, hit that notification bell as well, so you'll know when I put out new videos and uh, help support the channel by giving it a thumbs up. And that's it. Thanks a lot. Let's check out these pictures. I'll see you on the next one.